with Bob McAdory, Sherry Miller, and John Daw. Good evening. The strike by Ontario 17,000 doctors shows no sign of letting up at the beginning of a long weekend. Neither the government nor the Ontario Medical Association is willing to change its position on the extra billing ban, and approximately 20 hospitals across the province are providing restricted service tonight in protest. Vic Phillips has more on the story. The Ajax Pickering Hospital said they were taking a step in support of the doctor's strike today, but refused to elaborate. Spokesman Dr. Michael Gabriel had this statement. We have decided to close the Ajax and Pickering General Hospital effective immediately to all admissions other than life-threatening and obstetrical care. This is only the next logical step in our continuing escalation of job action. Later, when reporters wanted to know if this meant the hospital was actually shutting down all services, they met with this reaction from hospital officials. Don't, don't you think that the community has a right to know what you're doing at this hospital? Have the statements. That's all That's you're getting. Meanwhile, Premier David Peterson was in Brantford to open a parking garage today, and doctors were there to greet him. Alderman uh, German, I, I mean Sherman. Uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, in Toronto, opposition leader Larry Grossman met with OMA President Richard Railton. I think that you'd probably agree that the public of Ontario expects the government to, to uh, stop this. And I don't mean by that back-to-work legislation, but I mean by taking some positive steps to, to solve the problem. And they don't seem to be willing uh, or able to do that. Both Grossman and Railton say it's getting harder to find a solution as the strike drags on while a newly released public opinion poll shows that 77% of Ontario residents disapprove of the doctor's strike. Vic Phillips, Global News. The longest serving mayor of any North American city, Montreal's Jean Drapeau, announced today he's retiring from politics and will not be running in the November civic election. The news did not surprise many. The 70-year-old mayor has been suffering from poor health in recent years, and there had been widespread speculation that he would soon be leaving office. Jean Drapeau has held the often controversial office for all but three of the last 32 years. The people of Ireland have voted down an amendment that would legalize divorce in that country. The Irish Constitution sets a ban on divorce, and a large majority of the population have voted to keep it that way. John Thorne has more. The overwhelming defeat was evident from the first ballot box. The excuses have already begun. A combination of the Catholic Church's pulpit influence and the traditional conservatism of rural Ireland. In the cities, the unpopularity of the government decimated the young vote it counted on. Political tallymen soon reported the heavy trend as high as three to one against. The anti-divorce campaigners who ran a dirty campaign using children of 17, even younger children than that. Their minds were completely closed. All I wanted was a second chance, that's all. What it effectively means is that the majority of Irish people have said to their own, I don't care a damn what problems you have, we will not change the law to accommodate you. And that's a terrible indictment. It's, it's a terrible thing for any nation to say to a number of the people within their own nation, we are not going to look after you. As the results built up, the government had to assess the political damage, not only domestically, but to the Anglo-Irish agreement. The weekend will be spent on damage limitation. The unexpected rejection has rocked an administration facing a general election in the new year. A new blood substitute has proved to be a big disappointment for doctors across North America. As Eugenia Halsey reports, they were hoping it would solve a moral dilemma for one religious sect. It can be a vexing thing for doctors. Occasionally, patients whose lives are in danger refuse blood transfusions because of their religious beliefs. Edward Arnold represents the Jehovah's Witnesses in Chicago. Well, basically, it's a divine law that comes from the Almighty God, and so therefore it prohibits the use of blood in any form or in any way. As a result, there was great interest in the medical community when initial tests on laboratory animals indicated this white product called Fluosol might make an effective substitute for blood. But after several years of research, doctors here at Michael Reese Hospital in Chicago have concluded Fluosol doesn't work. We found that there really was no significant effect either in the short term, in terms of physiologic improvement, 
or in the long term in terms of uh, survival. Doctors' high hopes for Fluosol weren't limited to cases in which religion was a problem. They thought it might also protect people receiving transfusions from getting AIDS. It's a, a synthetic product. So there's uh, no need to worry about uh, viruses that, that might be in the product. While Fluosol apparently does not represent a medical breakthrough, researchers aren't giving up. They say there are other chemicals being studied that might make effective blood substitutes. Eugenia Halsey, CNN, Chicago. Ontario's Minister of Transportation has asked motorists to drive carefully during the July 1st long weekend. Ed Fulton says holiday weekend should be happy, family-oriented times. He says too often that happiness turns into tragedy because of accidents on our highways. Tonight, part two of a special series on highway safety. Paul Dalby reports. Our love affair with the automobile is 100 years old this year. German engineers Karl Benz and Gottlieb Daimler could not have imagined what they were starting with their first gasoline-powered automobiles a century ago. It all adds up to an infatuation that goes far beyond simply equipping ourselves with private transportation. And always, style had to be married to speed. In the 1980s, our mass-produced cars are lighter, faster, and more economical. About 30 million new cars come off the production line every year in automobile factories around the world. But when they leave the assembly line, too many of them take a short trip to the junk heap. And when it comes to the crunch, these complex pieces of engineering were no match for a high-speed highway accident or their careless, incompetent driver. Accidents develop over a very, very short period that it, there can be a matter of a few seconds between not having an accident and the whole accident developing and being over. Sandy Allen has investigated hundreds of traffic accidents in his role as an expert witness for the courts. When you think of uh, the instruction that people go through before they're allowed to fly an airplane in comparison to what we do in terms of uh, the automobile. You should go through uh, a real rigorous training in terms of uh, not only the operation of the vehicle, but what would happen in the event that you do get into difficulties. Uh, Even controlled crush design won't be much help to either the driver or the 14,000 separate parts that make up his car if both are involved in a crash at 90 kilometers per hour. More than 4,000 were killed on Canada's roads last year. Perhaps our highways can be improved. Top landscape architect Gerald Engler believes our major divided highways are too fast. If we want to live, we have to slow down. We're just driving too quickly. Uh, and we should have operating speeds. There are certain highways that, that operate better at certain speeds, whether it's 40 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, and so on. But in the final analysis, the responsibility for making our roads safer rests in the hands of the driver. And the statistics make it clear that too many drivers are poorly trained and ill-equipped for highway traffic in the 80s. Every year, Ontario licenses another 200,000 new drivers but none have been tested in skills such as skid control, night driving, and high-speed lane changing. Your chances of being involved in an accident are about one in five. That's a lot more likely than winning the lottery. And the odds will keep on shortening unless we take immediate steps to improve driver training and testing on our roads. Paul Dalby, Global News. Coming up, Publishers ring up record profits thanks to The Working Woman. It's our food, you'll always remember. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's our taste that makes us famous. We alone have the Colonel's secret recipe of 11 herbs and spices. And we use only the finest, freshest ingredients to bring you a taste like no other chicken. It's our taste that makes us famous. It's our taste when you're having fun. It's our taste that makes us famous. It's our taste. So
Sometimes you have to go home. On Sunday, June 29th at 9, August Schellenberg and Ed McNamara star in the television premiere of the multi-award winning drama production, The Prodigal. An absorbing portrait of a father and son struggling to gain an understanding and acceptance of each other before it's too late. Written and directed by Winnipeg's Alan Craker from a story by Guy Vanderhaeg, Global Television presents The Prodigal, Sunday at 9. The advertising world has found a new target, the working woman. She has money to spend and advertisers are rushing to attract those dollars. Tom Cassidy reports. Madison Avenue's courtship of that working woman has created a windfall for a number of magazines. Some new, some old, but all cashing in. We really filled a niche. We filled a void in the magazine community, and the readership is, is incredibly responsive. The advertisers who come into the magazine are in many ways overwhelmed by the response that they've had. Some of the advertisers haven't been able to fulfill the response. In fact, Working Woman magazine, a monthly, has now broken into the big time, carrying the third largest circulation among America's top four business magazines. She is a buying force, and uh, each year her, uh, her clout in all the, uh, the more high-priced uh, goods is being felt. That audience has also captured the attention of competitors, like Esquire publisher Philip Moffat. For the first time in certain income segments, a large number of women are actually making more than their husbands. This is a whole new world out there. And you, you could go, well, why didn't people start paying attention to this when it first started occurring? But it takes a while to build a critical mass that, that is what is called an audience. Esquire's Moffat plans on playing to that audience this fall with a brand new magazine called New York Woman. Betsy Carter is the editor in charge. Most magazines talk to you as a woman first. We're not women first. We're, we're people who live in this city or a big city first, and that defines our lives probably more than any other thing. And it's just time for us to have a magazine that talks to us in real language. Tom Cassidy, CNN, New York. Still ahead on entertainment, the Blues Brothers shares some expertise in a special report. This is Dan Aykroyd reporting for Global News. We'll be back with James Montgomery Blues Band and Alex Taylor and the East Coast Funkbusters.